Well, hello, my lovelies. It's your frag hag, Trina here. Welcome back to my channel. Well, a couple of months ago, I finally gave you my take on Maison Francis Kir de Jean Baccarat Rouge 540. Please check out that video here first, if you haven't already, because my reviews for today's 10 plus fragrances are a comparative analysis based on that review rather than individual in-depth reviews. That video will give you a reference point to get the gist of where I'm coming from. And this might be true even if you already have a bottle of the famous Baccarat Rouge 540. This video might take a wee while too, so get yourself a cup of joe, a glass of Bordeaux, a pot of tea, a mug of beer, or several shots of Jambui, or whatever else floats your boat. Let's get to it. Baccarat Rouge 540 has become one of the most hyped, most coveted, and most recognizable since its release. It was incredibly unique when it first came out, and also unbelievably versatile. Not too male, not too female, not too sweet. Appropriate for many seasons and occasions and times of the day. It's already easily reached perfume hall of fame status. No wonder then that so many have tried to ride the burnt caramel, cotton candy, saffron, ambroxan wave that uh, Baccarat Rouge 540 started in hopes of ultimately cashing in on its success, no doubt. I'm gonna give you a note breakdown for each scent. So as a reminder, here are the deceptively simple notes in Baccarat Rouge 540. One of the qualities of 540 that I deeply value is its beast mode performance. Let me say right now that none of the dupes I'm going to mention, except for perhaps the last two clones or inspirations, uh, have anywhere really close to the projection, sillage, or longevity of BR540. And that just in itself, my friends, makes this spendy perfume kind of worth the indulgence if your wallet allows. But obviously I have dupes too, and there are reasons for that I'll share later. I'm going to introduce these alternatives to BR540 in order of least similar to most similar. Some of these fragrances simply consist of the same DNA as BR540, if you will, and uh, then they go in their own direction, while others seem to want to be Baccarat Rouge 540. I did switch up the order a few times because there were different facets of each that constitute the similarities, so I didn't find this ranking to be the easiest of tasks, and I wouldn't be surprised if you disagree with my placements. Heck, I might even change my mind again after this video is published. But I do want to say that similarity in smell to BR540 is not enough to make it a viable substitute. Price point and performance are also very important factors, as is the degree to which you like or dislike the points of difference in any given fragrance. Weighing in on all these factors, at the end I'll give you my top three alternatives. You may never need to buy or repurchase Back out of Rouge 540 again. Or will you? Strap in loves, you're in for a nice long ride and you will enjoy this or I will shoot you. Oula Rouge by Christiane Seriano. This is the only one that I no longer possess in my collection, but to be honest, I only ever had a sample of it anyway. And as you might tell by the name, uh, Project Runway TV series winner Seriana was not trying to hide much with this creation, launched in 2020. Here are the notes. It's a much more floral version of BR540 that didn't last long on me. It's also lighter in one way, but at the same time it's also darker because of the heavy amber note. Honestly, it was tricky for me to rank this one correctly without having access to the juice, and that's why I mentioned it first. If you know this fragrance, let me know how you would rank it. Florals are not my favorite, so I didn't want to place it high, and also I remember it being a bit too sweet. I'm not a fan of the bottle either, but I guess that's not a factor here. I love Mansara and Sister Company Montal's fragrances for their performance. Instant Crush is not as strong as the rest of the Mansara lineup, but it does have some similarities to Baccarat Rouge 540. It's very smooth and like Burberry Her, which I'll mention next, uh, has a fruitier opening. 
Mm. As you can see, I only have a decant of this, but there's definitely familiar notes in Instant Crush, which is an amber floral launched uh, in 2019. Montal and Mansara use in-house perfumers. The sister companies are a family business. This fragrance bears that familiar Mansara and Montal DNA signature that make it stand apart. You'll know it's not MFK's work, but it is an intoxicating and delicious metallic and synthetic woody ambroxan bomb, and that's why it's on this list. It's also much louder and less sophisticated, less beautiful and less ephemeral. I wouldn't say no to a full bottle though. Now we have Burberry Her, created by none other than Francis Kierdejean himself. I guess you could say he duped his own masterpiece work of 2015. Why not? This one is obviously not identical though. It's sweeter, fruitier, and more floral than BR540. There are red berries in here like strawberry and raspberry. It's yummy, but it's not not as brilliant as 540. The floral fruity gourmand was launched in 2018 and here are the notes. So yes, a few uh, similar notes to BR540, but definitely a very, very sweet and sour take and uh, minus that certain je ne sais quoi that uh, the original has. The version I have is a rollerball, which I dislike because it, the liquid gets clogged up with your body oils and this one is already suffering a, a bit. It's very cloudy. Cloud. In a nutshell, this has more sugar, more vanilla, and a coconut note. The performance is kind of poor, and I paid more for this than I wanted to, to be honest. And I don't like the bottle at all either. Very twee, very juvenile, but I guess this is appropriate for the target market, which I assume uh, is largely very young people. The perfumer of this floral fruity gourmand is Clément Gavary, and the perfume was launched in 2018. I'll be honest guys, I had no idea who Ariana Grande was when this came out. Yeah, I know I'm probably an old fart in the eyes of some, but my bigger excuse is living in Japan since the 90s. There's a lot of Western pop culture that um, I do miss out on. It's easier not to do so in the, in the age of the internet, but uh, I guess I choose not to pick up on certain trends. I think that's a benefit uh, to having a modicum of maturity. I don't really care. I've also found uh, that one's obsession with music as a youth tends to calm as one ages. I don't know, what do you think guys, if you're older like me? Anyway, before I go off topic too much, here are the notes for Cloud. Cloud is now probably one of the first dupes of BR540 that many people think of. And when I smell it on others, I can usually recognize that coconut note that makes it different. It's lovely and creamy, but it lacks the sophistication provided by, I think, the saffron in BR540. It's a very girly and teeny bopper uh, fragrance to me. That by no means translates into a dislike of this fragrance though, despite the bottle. There's an intense version out on the market now, which I assume dupes the BR540 Extra de Parfum, but uh, I could be wrong. Comment below if you know. All Saints is supposed to be a fashion brand like Banana Republic, Zara and the like, I suppose, but sorry, I'd not heard of it. And this fragrance, Sunset Riot, was recommended on a blog post I read some years ago, but sadly, I cannot recall where I read it. Anyway, I looked at the company and found that they do have a presence in Japan with several branches in Tokyo, as well as some of the bigger cities. However, the online version of the company did not sell fragrance, still does not, I checked recently. Zara has been killing it recently in the fragrance world, and I've also been impressed with Banana Republic, having done a review of their icon scent some time ago, and I'll post a link to that up here. Uh, anyway, I procured this bottle, and I love the juice it contains. I also really uh, appreciate the packaging. Um, this is more of an airy, unisex fragrance and it has an ambery and broxen bomb feel of Baccarat Rouge 540, but it goes in a different metallic and minerally direction. It's a decidedly urban feeling. 
and it's not as sweet as BR540 to my nose. And I get a, I get a little waft of disinfectant in a warmed plastic container. Pencil shavings uh, dusted with pink pepper, sea salt, and also that seaside cologne note that I usually don't like, but in this it works quite nicely. The ocean vibe I pick up doesn't show up in the abbreviated note list, however, so it could be just me. And instead there's a rose note, which I admit uh, I don't pick up at all, maybe because it's so well blended. Maybe it's at the base. Designer All Sense currently has at least six fragrances, all of which have the same aesthetic with their presentation. Like BR540, you can see an image through the glass on the back of the bottle on the sticky label. This one appears to be some sort of flower. I love the stone or concrete cap on this, and I love the snap sound it makes. Yeah. And uh, I love the minimalistic presentation, and more importantly, the juice the bottle contains. Sunset Riot was released along with Metal Wave in and uh, Intense City in 2018. Leather Skies and Flora Mortis came out in 2019. And in 2021, we have Concrete Rain. Interesting names, and I would now like to sniff all of them if they're anything as good as this. The nose behind all the fragrances is Gabriella Cellario. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but I could be wrong. And it's likely all of her concoctions put a new spin on well-loved fragrances already in the market. This one was pretty hard for me to get in Japan. I think I went well over retail and paid for shipping, but it was worth it. And I'd consider repurchasing this if I came across it again. It's got good longevity, but a little bit low wattage when it comes to sillage, but it does do well on clothes. Yeah, Sunset Riot. I've already reviewed Private Musk for You in a previous video, and I did not rate it as high as I prob it probably deserved for a couple of reasons. First, it's an oil, and I'm not a fan of oil-based perfumes. I like to be able to spray on clothing. Although oils tend to last longer on the skin, and they're very moisturizing, they also have poor projection typically, but this oriental musk does share a few notes in common with BR540. Yeah, I've, I've come to enjoy this perfume a lot more since I reviewed it. Perhaps you can see that uh, by the fact that it's already almost halfway done. And this one's great for layering with other BR540 dupes. I think it makes them last longer. The actual smell of this does differ a bit from the original, uh, the BR540, in that it's softer, it's far muskier, and it has that Middle Eastern quality to it. While BR540 is unapologetically synthetic smelling, I think this one smells far more natural. It's quite lovely. <laughs> Although this fragrance came out in 2020, it's a more recent discovery for me and actually prompted me to finally put together this video that you're now watching. I originally brought, bought the uh, eight or 10 milliliter size and the only thing that was disappointing to me about this was that it turned out to be a rollerball scent instead of a spray. Uh, but I did go online and immediately purchase not one, but two large, bottles and this is the first time I've deliberately purchased a backup of any scent but that might speak to the scarcity and the price of this uh, perfume rather than the deeply rooted love I have for it. When I bought the rollerball the biggest bottles were sold out and as a fast fashion brand that is Zara I don't trust that the fragrance will be available for long and Zara is ultra affordable so I readily brought out my credit card and purchased a few other smellies that I'll share with you later. Here are the notes in Red Temptation. So yes, it's indeed an obvious dupe. The name is even obvious. Of course, it's not going to be exactly the same, but for the price, rest assured, 
the differences will be negative. <laughs> the first difference is that the carrier for the whole fragrances appears to be an equal volume of rubbing alcohol. So not only is the formula weaker than BR540, but it's also very top heavy with abrasive metallic alcohol. And it does calm down after you spray, but uh, do sniff this not immediately after applying. I also detect a very faint salty marine note in here, but nothing like Sunset Riot. And yeah, it lacks anything remotely close to the performance that Baccarat Rouge 540 possesses. But you know, if you think of this as simply a less sophisticated body mist version, as opposed to a perfume, I don't think you'll be disappointed considering how much it costs, which is under $20 for this 80 ml bottle. US dollars, that is. I've only had this for a little while. Look how much I've gone through it. Tinhare is an amber floral fragrance launched in 2019 via nose Eric Fracapane. It's an interesting dupe for BR540, as people who smell it on others might be pressed to identify the differences, but when at least I smell it on myself, I'm not super blown away, but not underwhelmed either. It's notably less sweet to my nose than um, Baccarat Rouge 540, although it does have its own type of sweetness but it does fall a little flat. The fragrance does not come so cheap either. A few of you may not be familiar with the brand, but you can in fact find it on Amazon and my local mall sells it. Here are the notes, but I suspect there might be more to it than listed here. The burnt cotton candy aura of BR540 is there, but you don't get the shape-shifting quality of it. If you don't want to pay the super exorbitant price of BR540 yet, you want a higher quality and less synthetic smelling fragrance than Cloud, minus the sugar and coconut, and you don't mind spending a little bit more, well, maybe a bit more, yeah. Um, this is an option. But I rather do think it's more similar to Red Temptation than BR540. It's got about the same longevity, which is not great. And I only rank it higher than the Zara dupe because I think it's a little classier. Amber Oud Rouge by Al Haramein is marketed as an amber floral and was launched in 2019. And as you can tell by the notes, it's got a very similar profile to BR540. This obvious dupe has notable presentation elements that one might perceive as a plus. It comes in a plastic box lined with velvet-like material and there are metal embellishments on both. I think you might be paying for that though, although the fragrance is not unreasonably priced. This is a Middle Eastern brand, but the DNA here is more French, like MFK. Uh, I don't like heavy bottles, but this looks okay and I plan to use the box <laughs> to hold bits and bobs in my office. Ambre Eau de Rouge is not as powerful as BR540, but I wouldn't say it doesn't perform. Al Haramein is generally good at that sort of thing. The scent itself seems sharper than BR540 to me, and perhaps also earthier and not as sweet. Actually, this is more of a copy of the Extrait version, I feel. The bottle bears a stronger resemblance to the Extrait de Parfum as well. Now I've read or heard that this fragrance might actually be discontinued or perhaps it already is. Rumor has it that there was a cease and desist letter from MFK himself. <laughs> Perfume formulations are not copyright protected by the way, so just putting that out there, but branding and trademarking are. Still, you'll likely be able to pick up a bottle from online discounters, which is where I got mine. I think it was Fragrance X. Al Hanamein has several perfumes with a similar presentation in the Amber Oud line, which apparently all emulate more expensive perfumes, by the way, so you might want to check those out if you enjoy a good dupe. I'm grouping these last two, or four, you could say, together, because to me they're just about well, not exactly, but they're the same sort of thing. I've actually purchased and almost used up all four fragrance offerings, uh, which I had purchased over the years. 
Each Clone House brand creates the intense version of Baccarat Rouge by 40 in addition to the regular. And you know what? They're pretty excellent clones. Identical, perhaps not, but you'd have to be quite the affectionado to identify the differences. And if you care a lot about cost and don't mind the idea of clones, it's hard to go wrong with these brands. I made a video in defense of clone houses some time ago, so do check that out if you haven't already. Both Dua and Alexandria, those are both clone houses, and I think they're somehow related. One person in one company used to work for the other. Uh, they've updated their packaging since, but I have this older bottle from Alexandria, and that's what it used to look like. This particular fragrance is a clone of Frederick Mall's Portrait of a Lady, which is a very pricey masterpiece, and I'm content enough with this one. I have decants of the regular and the extra versions from each clone house, but honestly, I've forgotten which one is which, which clone is which extra. I don't know. Anyhow, they're they're very similar. The, the I prefer Alexandria's packaging to do as, and I think I actually did prefer their rendition of. Uh, Baccarat Rouge 540, um, and I also don't really like the packaging of Dua. However, the Dua Clone House does something really interesting with their clones of top-selling designer and niche houses. They combine them. A while back, I had a bottle that combined By the Fireplace with Baccarat Rouge 540, two of my favorite fragrances, and um, sure, I guess you could layer those fragrances if you wanted, but I can't be bothered, and it was a nice 30 ml bottle. It was I think it was 30 ml, it was pretty small, and I went through that so fast, it was great. The nose behind Interplay from Alexandria is Hani Hafez. So essentially sage rather than fur resin is in this concoction. And the nose behind Casino Royale from Dua is Massam Raza. So again, very similar, although this one shows more of the chemical side of the note listing. I have blind tested these clones side by side with each other and with Baccarat Rouge 540 and 540 Extrait. And yeah, I mean, there are some differences, but you know, not a lot. The Dua versions are oilier in texture and a little more almondy. And I, I guess I'm not really a fan of that uh, marigold note, but honestly, they'll be close enough for many of you. Not all of you, but many of you. With so many clones and dupes in my collection now, and the fact that I still have a fair amount of the original in the bottle here, and because I have other fragrances I want to explore, I very much doubt I'll be repurchasing um, this exact thing for a little while. But you know, there's, there's nothing like the real thing. Okay, those are the alternatives that I have had the pleasure of sniffing, but please note, there are plenty more out there that I personally have not had a chance to get my nose on. Examples are Rosewood Amour by Banana Republic and uh, In the Stars by Bath & Body Works. These are affordable alternatives that I will try and sniff out when I go back to Canada. Yes, we are nearing the end of the travel bans. I'm so excited to get out of Japan. Another cheap fragrance I know of, uh, but I've not tried yet, is from Zara as well. It's called Night Pour Um 5, with apparently poor longevity, but uh, c'est la vie. Montal's Sensual Instinct is said to be similar to Mansara's Instant Crush. As I said earlier, Montal and Mansara usually have super technical merit, so if that's important to you, do check those out. There's also Oud for Greatness by Initio, and I do have a sample of that one. It has a sweet and airy quality, but the wood here is too oody for me to have put it on this list. And Initio fragrances are expensive too, as are those from Tiziana Terenzi, which apparently also has a fragrance that bears some semblance to Baccarat 540 called Spirito Fiorentino. And finally, I'm certain that many, if not most, of the clone houses out there, like Dua or Alexandria, also have made their attempts at cloning BR540. Why wouldn't they? Garam by Swiss Arabian, Aristocrat by Ajmal, and Federico Mahora FM Pure Royale 910 are examples, although you might define them more as dupes than clones. The line can be blurry. Ah, okay, how long have I been talking? My battery just died. Where was I? Yes, 
If you're interested in exploring the inspiration options, meaning clone houses, check out my blog. I have a page listing every clone house I know of, and I'll, I'll link to it in the description. And please, if you know of any other uh, viable dupes, kindly comment in the comment section below. So why do I have all these dupes, you ask? Well, I started out actually not with the real thing, but with the clones, because I simply didn't want to spend all that money on the real deal. But I've come to realize that there's nothing like the real thing, and then I broke down and bought it, and no regrets. But you know, having dupes in your collection is pretty useful. Um, first and foremost, it gives you something to douse yourself with guilt-free every day without using up your precious bottle of the original. Instead, you can save the real McCoy for days that are special or at least above average, you know? The last time I wore this was actually at a wedding a few months ago. So many compliments. I hope I didn't take away too much attention from the uh, happy couple. Another reason why I buy all these dupes is just sheer curiosity. Anything that smells similar to BR540 will likely make my heart sing, so I'm not adverse to a blind buy to check it out if uh, the claims are true. And I suppose that buying all these dupes knowing they are not exact matches that are a little different from the original can be compared to buying flankers of scents you're already obsessed with, just to get more variety but keep within something you know you love. Of course, a final reason for all the dupes in my case is so that I can share a few of them with you here on YouTube. And certainly this is why I purchased Red Temptation. But I'm glad this video is just about done now. I'm not necessarily finished hunting down BR540 dupes, but I reached a point where it's time to cull my collection a wee bit. I plan to spray through some of these bottles rather quickly so I can cull some stuff from my shelves and leave room for more. Uh, especially like this kitschy cloud thingy. I'd, I'd like to get rid of this. As for BR540 itself, you know, I don't know if I'll repurchase this. I may just revert to a clone from Alexandria. They're pretty darn close and have excellent performance for much less than the original, you know? But I plan to prolong the inevitable by using this sparingly. So clones aside, you're wanting to hear my top three from my list of dupes, yes? Well, scratch off anything that starts to get expensive because by then you might as well save up a bit more to get the real thing. Unless, as I mentioned earlier, you want those little tweaks that add variety. For an all-rounder dupe, I would say that uh, Al Haramein is worth it. I think it's the closest smelling at a reasonable price point. And second, I would actually get Sunset Riot, which to me is uh, different enough to make it be doing its own thing. But if you like BR540 for that airy, freaky, and rocks and bomb quality, then you're probably going to like this. And um, if you're not a fan of aquatic senses, I'd say give it a go as well. You might not even perceive the aquatic part of it that I do. Finally, Red Temptation is going to be my third choice. The alcohol opening in here is not great, the performance is not great, but it's definitely better than the average Zara fragrances I've tried over the years. And there are similarities to um, BR540, a lot of them. And oh my god, the price, guys. I mean, you, really, you know, just bring it around, decant it and spray it all day. It'll, it'll, it'll make you happy <laughs> if you like BR540. Okay, my lovelies, I hope this was not too painfully long, but instead entertaining and informative for you. If so, smash the like button and notification bell, and do make sure you subscribe if you're not already. More fragrance content to come. Scent Gourmand, signing out. Mwah.